Hello and welcome back to the Watford Way. Today we look ahead to Watford's fixture against Coventry City at home on Saturday afternoon. Now of course we'll touch on the Coventry game in just a moment but I think it's right we discuss very briefly Watford's last game at Vicarage Road. Of course we're having two games uh, in a row at Watford this week. A 1-1 draw against Swansea City on Wednesday night and of course the game against Coventry City tomorrow as you watch this video today. Um, and yeah not a lot of positives to take if any against Swansea City. I think the one shining light in the game was probably uh, George Chapadakse's cameo in the second half a man of the match substitute appearance in my opinion he changed the game for Watford uh, and especially with Ken Semmer picking up an injury I'd expect him to start in this game against Coventry City but look I'm going to be brutally honest with you I'm at, I'm absolutely shocked Blair and Ismail has not lost his job I still personally don't want him to I just want to see this season out and then as I said before reassess his situation in the summer uh, but we know who owns Watford Gino Pozzo owns Watford and we know his track record of firing managers uh, who have actually had much better better records than Valerio Nijmal has done this season uh, I'll take you back to the likes of Slavan Bilic Chris Wilder uh, Rob Edwards for example um, but look I'm glad Ismail is still in his job am I glad at the recent run of form Watford have been on especially at home I'm really not glad about that at all. There's one win, I believe, in the last eight games at Vicarage Road, which is terrifying statistics, really. I believe it's the worst home form what they've had in this division for a number of years. I think decades even from, from what I read earlier. So um, it's not been good. I'm hoping for a more positive result on Saturday. Uh, but again, look, touching on the Swansea game, obviously we went behind early on uh, through a Ryan Andrews own goal. Valerian Ishmael decided to change the goalkeeper, which I was surprised about, to say the least. I didn't think Ben Hamer had done anything particularly wrong uh, to warrant a change of goalkeeper. But I, I suppose from Valerian Ishmael's perspective, he wants to try absolutely everything he can to get the best performance out of these players. Um, but yeah, I think that decision backfired on him majorly in the opening stages of that game. Ryan Andrews did everything he should have done and could have done in the situation he was faced with. He headed the ball back to Daniel Batman, who for some reason was wildly out of position. Uh, and that ultimately led to Ryan Andrews heading back uh, into an open net and putting Swansea 1-0 up. Watford did get back into the game during the second half, finally scoring from a set piece in the corner with Ryan Porteous getting the final touch off Wesley Hoot's near post header. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Georgie Chatfordatse was really the substitute who changed the game for Watford. So a couple of positives to take from the Swansea game, not majorly impressed. Uh, we didn't lose. That's a positive. Again, Georgie with a good substitute appearance. Porteous with the header from the corner. Um, and yeah, Wesley Hute is, is consistent as he always is. But uh, yeah, looking at this Coventry game, I'm a little bit concerned, especially with the news that Dean Austin and Mark Robbins, well, Dean Austin was at Vicarage Road, uh, who was a Coventry head of recruitment, doing some scouting for Coventry ahead of their game against us this weekend. And he was caught texting Coventry manager Mark Mark Robbins from the stands uh, by a Watford fan who had taken photos uh, of his phone from a couple of rows behind, which basically said um, that they weren't impressed by Watford. Um, you know, the players didn't want to run for the manager and they would be shocked, actually, it said in their text, if Valer and Ishmael was still in his, would still be in his job uh, come Saturday afternoon. So I think for me, I found that very interesting and revealing what um, opposition managers and uh, coaches are saying about us and largely the texts we saw from Dean Austin and Mark Robbins were pretty much true. I mean for me personally watching the game from the stands on Wednesday night the players didn't really look like they wanted to be there. It didn't look like they were necessarily putting in 100% effort. They really struggled against a poor Swansea City side so from a Watford perspective, looking at the texts uh, that had come out between Mark Robbins and Dean Austin, um, they were pretty much accurate, to be honest. And hopefully that, you know, sends a message to the Watford manager and the Watford players that they kind of need to up their levels ahead of this weekend. And, and hopefully they can use that as 
as motivation really to, to try and get three points from this game. In terms of Watford injury news, I believe there's only two players out confirmed for this game. Ken Semmer picking up yet another injury uh, in the game midweek against Swansea City, so he will be unavailable. And as I said, I suspect Georgie Chaffordatse will play in his place after his cameo appearance off the bench. Uh, and Jeremy Ngakia again picking up another injury. Very, very frustrating. Is really injury prone, which does concern me. Uh, when he gets on a good run of form and when he plays a few games in a row, he seems to be a pretty decent option defensively at fullback. Um, but obviously, you know, the best attribute for any professional footballer to have is availability. And Jeremy Ngakia just isn't doing it for me uh, at the moment. So a real shame he's got injured again. Uh, and I suspect Ryan Andrews will probably play again at right back uh, on Saturday afternoon. Now, what do I expect my score prediction to be for the Coventry game? Well, obviously, looking at the reverse fixture from earlier this season. We played them in early September. Uh, and what a game that was. Matthias Martins with a wonderful goal. I believe Mleta Rajevic scored two goals in that game as well. Wesley Hugh, obviously, with that own goal, which I'm sure we can all remember as well. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Hopefully, we get to see lots of goals uh, from the Watford players this time. Uh, and, yeah, hopefully, we don't score any more own goals because that clearly has been, for some reason, a big issue for us this season, which is uh, a funny thing to say. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can cut the mistakes out of our game defensively and hopefully pick up a positive result on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 to Watford, the clean sheets at home. Uh, and I'm going to go with Yasset Espria and Vacuum Bios to get the goals in this one. So let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments section down below. Don't forget to subscribe as well to the Watford way. And I'll catch you again very soon for another video. Bye bye.